Gene Griffin and Teddy broke apart. So Teddy let us out of our contract. So now we have no contract. I'm, 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 I'm 18 years old. I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do. Chill Will, my mentor again, takes me to Puff. Takes me to Puff Daddy. So we go to Puff Daddy, and Puff Daddy says, yo, I fucking love this shit. Yo, this shit is hot, man. This shit is crazy. All right, here's what we're going to do, bro. We're going to put you, first we're going to let you do the hard shit that you do for the streets. Then we're going to put you in a suit and tie. And we're going to make you for the women. You're going to be the fat nigga that women love. Who's that? Heavy D. Who's the next person? Remember, he's, he's, he's on Uptown now. This is, this is right before he gets fired from Bad Boy. Who does that person become? Who, Puff? No, no. That person he wanted me to be with okay. him. Notorious B.I.G. Notori- he had that idea. Puff had that idea. He, he had it down pat. He told everything, I'm going to put you in the flyest shit. First, I'm going to let you wear the hood and do the street shit. Then I'm going to put you with the clothes and everything. We're going to make you a fly nigga. Like, you're going to make you crazy fly. And you're going to have the, the street niggas. And you're going to have the, the R&B people. Anyway, um, you know, Puff gave us paperwork. And at that time, you know, he used to call my house like a lot, man. Like, God bless the dead. My father always, you know, when, when Puff became Puff Puff, my father used to say, yeah, I remember when Puff used to call the house and talk to me. All right, dad, come on, man. Um, eventually, I came to a conclusion, Sean. I said to myself, I'm rapping these hard raps, but I'm dancing like Dougie Fresh. I'm, I'm a happy guy. You know, because I learned the dancing and the performance through Doug, and I wasn't no tough dude. I was fucking making music. Of course, we all know killers and all that shit from the neighborhood, and we we got people, but I was like, yo, I'm rapping all this street shit, but I'm not about this shit. Mm -hmm. And I had to sit down and I said, if I do this, I had the the fucking uh, wherewithal to understand that if I do this shit, these motherfuckers are going to test me on this. I knew that I was going to go to Kansas and street niggas in Kansas was going to have a problem with me. I knew I was going to go to Texas. So I wasn't even, I wasn't even thinking about that. I, I was thinking about Harlem niggas, New York niggas, the niggas I know, Wolves, all of that shit. I knew they was going to be on my back because they don't know, they know I'm not about that life. You, you understand where I'm coming from? Listen, if you fuck with my daughter, you fuck with my son, I'll kill you. I'll kill you. Because that's my life. I don't have nothing else to live for. But I'm not no tough nigga. I'm not handling keys of coke or selling apes. I'm not doing any of that shit. And I started to say, well, who am I really? And the music that I loved was James Brown and, and Otis Redding and all that shit. So I made my own kind of style and we became a group called Three With Soul. I went back to Puff with that demo. That Three With Soul is sounding like De La Soul and shit like that. I go back to him. He takes the fucking tape. He, put, he puts it in the fucking cassette player. And we play him the shit. I'm like, yeah, this is the shit I'm about, right? Like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> fuck this, right? But you know Puff, when Puff get crazy and extra, he fucking takes the, 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 the fucking tape out, he throws that shit across the table. I don't want this shit. <laughs> and I just, I, I just, I just, you know, I, it's Puff, right? Puff was, he was Puff Daddy back then. He, he, he was, you know, he was still at Uptown. He was, he was, you know, no, actually, I think he was right at Bad Boy. It was like right at the start of Bad Boy. And he, and he, you know, he was on that rocks. And um, I just said, you know, all right. And then I, I fucking said, fuck that. I went and worked at a, a job called, I, w- I went and worked at Mount Sinai Hospital. And I worked in, a, in the laundry department. In the oh, laundry oh, department. I, want, I, want, I, want you, I want you, I want to touch, touch on a point before we move further in your story, if you don't mind. Because I try to extract as many gems and many things that can help somebody who's on their journey from your wisdom. And one of the things that you said was, you're making this music, and at the time, for anybody who doesn't know what Puff meant to the industry at that time, he, I mean, this guy was, he was not as big as he would become, but he was the hot he, he was the hot young a he was the hot young exec. 
He was the guy you wanted to get down with. Hook was the fucking man in New York. And anybody in the music business, if you woke up in the morning, you wanted to be like Puff, period. Period. And, and that's, that, that's factual. So you have Sean Combs, Puff Daddy at the time, wanting to sign you and your crew. And you have this realization, this, this awareness that I'm being signed under false pretenses. Yeah, it's fake. And I think for anybody who's listening, to become successful, it's one thing to know who you are and what you want, but truly to become successful, you have to know who you're not and who you don't want to become. And I love that at 18 years old or so, you had this big opportunity. Most people would have taken it. Most people would have been like, I just got to get in. I know what Puff can do. I know what Uptown, I know what Bad Boy can do for my life. I'm going to take this opportunity. But the fact that you stayed true to who Isaac Freeman was at heart, I I, I, got to commend you on that. And I really want people to listen to that point because Mm -hmm. out of that story, I think that that is one of the greatest gems, one of the greatest gifts that you can give our audience is sometimes, you know, some money costs too much. It, It ain't worth going out there and pretending to be something that you're not on any level. You were in the music. You, you, you're coming with these hard lyrics. But like you said, what's going to happen when I go to Kansas City? What's going to happen when I go to Texas? And they start testing me. It, 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 that money costs too much. So whatever it is you're doing, I would, I, would, I would ask of you, please be very true to who you are. Be very true to your purpose. Because it might delay your your success. But when your success comes, it's gonna come. It's go, it, it, will, it will absolutely come, but it will be true. And you will be able to have a longevity, just like you have had. Mm-hmm. Had you been slinging guns and talking about all the weight you moved, maybe you would have got a hit, but you would have been out of here 20 something years ago. Yeah, but. It's even bigger than that. So I look at it and I look back and listen, I, I loved Big. I thought, yeah, you worked with Big. I mean, shit, you worked hand in hand with Big. Like, I could have been Biggie. Correct. I would have been in the middle of some shit with Suge Knight and them that I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, not built. built for that. You're not built for not, it. Uh, you know, I, I would have been in this shit, some shit with legitimate gang members and shit like that that I wasn't built for. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.